everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and we're doing yet another random ass anime review. And the one we're taking a look at today happens to be Wild Knight Golkiva, which is a 26 episode series from 1995, and it was based after a manga that was serialized in Shonen Sunday Super. And it's a fantasy action involving some magic beast warriors. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna get that reference, but if you know, then you know. So let's talk about it. So the story takes place on Earth, but of course they have to give it a fancy name by calling it Earthside. And the main character happens to be Toya, who happens to be your typical high school guy who happens to like the Kendo Club. And he happens to have two other friends, being Kira and Konoha. Well, one day after school, there is a, a giant monster that attacks a city. And while everyone is freaking out, he ends up wanting to go home, but then when he gets home, he ends up finding that these uh, three Magic Beast Warriors end up, like, going into his house. So he freaks out about it, but then it turns out that his parents seem to know a lot about this, like, weird stuff that's going on than they lead on. So the three Magic Beast Warriors came from a whole other world called uh, Heavenstea. I don't think that's pronounced right. It might be called Heavenstea. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, it has the word Heaven and then Stea at the end. So these three Magic Beast Warriors happen to be Grafus, who is a wolf, uh, Gorel, who is a gorilla, and then there's Beakwood, the eagle. <laughs> Beakwood. I don't know why, but that name is just so random compared to the other two. I mean, it makes sense for who he is, but it's just like, it doesn't sound very, like, fantasy-like, I find. So as for the reason why these Magic Beast Warriors came around is because they were actually sent by their, their leader queen to protect Earth from the Darknoids. Yeah, the Darknoids. What, is uh, that little character named Yonoid? Is he a Darknoid? So yeah, to sum it up, the Darknoids are like these like evil beings that are like demons and you know, they just like to wreak havoc all over the place. So they're just trying to take over Earth of an elaborate plan and of course, the three Magic Beast Warriors have to stop them. But they also want to get Toya involved because he actually happens to have the spirit of an old uh, legend called Radius. And then his parents explain to him and give him the news that he was actually never human to begin with. Yeah, him and his parents were actually from the other world. So I guess if you think about it, this is kind of like a reverse Ikasai, where instead of like characters being trapped in a whole new world, it's instead characters from a whole new world being stuck in the Earth world. So yeah, as you might expect, like, the main character struggles to get into his power, and then once he does, he, you know, fights off, like, the enemies where he helps the other Magic Beast Wars turn, like, Super Saiyan, so to speak. And the Dark Noids always try to come up with new ideas to try to get rid of the Magic Beast Warriors. And as the adventure goes along, they meet, like, newer characters, there's an involving of newer situations, and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, that's the basic premise of this one, if we just wanted to sum it up in its basic form. But as always, we'll touch upon more things later. So, for now, let's get move on to the other things, like the animation. I think the animation in this one is quite good, but I would mostly say that the art style is what I really like most about it. Now, like I've said like a million times on this channel, I tend to love a lot of like 90s style like animes for that. I just really love like the detail that they put into them and the designs. And yes, the character designs in this one I really like. So when Toya transforms and has like that super epic armor, I think it actually looks really cool. And also really like the other Magic Beast Warrior designs. Like I think like they kind of like when they transform, they kind of remind me of like Digimon. But even in their basic form, they still look pretty cool and do have some really nice looking weapons. Also, the enemies also have some cool designs as well, and they also use a lot of, like, really interesting looking mech designs that kind of remind me of something out of Mazinger Z a little bit. Like, I wouldn't classify this as a mecha anime, but the fact that the enemies tend to use a lot of, like, mecha-like creatures, like, I just think it's just kind of interesting looking. Also, the backgrounds are pretty nice looking as well, but I'd probably say, like, my favorite part of it is where you get to see, like, the other worlds, like, you know, like, the world where the Magic Beast Wars came from looks really nice. Also, the castle that the, uh, the Darknoids are hiding at looks really interesting as well. It has, like, a little, like, inner, like, pit with, like, windows upon it. I think that's very unique. 
So while all that is really good, how is the animation flow itself? I think it's good enough, like it's consistent for the most part, and it's nothing like overly amazing looking, like it's not like the most smoothest, but it's also not like janky and like looks like shit. Similar to what I said about Jungle King Tarchan's web animation where like, it's good, it's fitting, but it's just nothing like mind blowing looking. Like there are like a few instances where they do kind of cheap out a little bit, where they do like, you know, do the whole recycling of attack animation, but I don't really have a problem with that too much since I do understand that trying to do this shit with making it all look unique all the time is kind of hard. But I think the most important part is that at least the animation flow is fairly consistent and doesn't look bad at all, so I overall, I'm pretty okay with it. So now, as for the show's music, surprisingly, I actually think it's pretty great and I love it a lot. Now I will admit, trying to explain on like what makes this soundtrack like so good is kind of hard because it does sound like very typical background anime music, but I just really love the vibe it has, like it has a lot of different like variety. Like you got like a lot of like really cool sounding like motivational music, you got some pretty good kick-ass guitar music, you also got some nice like more quieter pieces. And the composer for this one happens to be Kenji Kawai, who has done quite a lot of different stuff, and some also really good ones too. I won't go over all of them, but one uh, anime I did cover uh, somewhat recently was that he actually did do the music for Izelian, so that was pretty awesome. Also, the opening theme for this one is pretty great, I really like it a lot. The song is called Don't Look Back, I find it to be pretty catchy and upbeat sounding. And the ending theme is pretty good too. That one is a bit more of a, um, you know, more quieter, like, ballad type piece, but it's quite nice. So overall, I can definitely say that the OST is really great, and I find it to be a very underrated one. So now, as for the show's voice acting, as again, I can't really say much here because it's only in Japanese, so I can't say if, like, the voice acting was good or not. But I did look up like a couple cast members and I did see some that did do some other things that I recognized. For example, the voice of the main character also happened to do uh, a character from Fuyushi Yugi, El Hazard, the Virtua Fighter anime, and he even did uh, Merrick Ishtar from Yu-Gi-Oh! Also the voice for uh, Konoha has also played in like a shit ton of things. It's almost too many to name, but in case you're wondering who it was, is that she was played by uh, Michiko Aneya. So yeah, I don't have much else to say about on that, but I do have to mention that the subtitles in this one are not perfect. It seems to be a thing lately that a lot of these obscure shows I've been uh, watching for reviewing have always seemed like they just have, like, not great subtitles. Now I will say, the subtitles are a step above uh, stuff like Jungle King and, uh, what was it, uh, the Beast uh, Apocalypse shit, the one that, that, like, really sucked. So while it is better than those, it still has some inconsistencies, like I know there are some characters' names that are just not spelled right, or they're just called something completely different, but outside of that, it, it's, it's okay. So now, what are my overall thoughts on Wild Knight Gulkiva, is that... I think this show is decent, kind of fun, but nothing super great. So I'll go out and say that I do like the idea of the show, I also do like some of the characters. For an example, I think the Magic Beast Warrior characters were pretty cool looking, and they were actually pretty decent characters. They had their fun moments, like for an example, the character Grafus always seems to like to like take things apart, but whenever he does, he thinks like he's like an expert on it, but then he ends up fucking up the whole thing. It's kind of amusing. Also, the character Garel is very good with the two kid characters that actually lost their mother during like one of the attacks early on. And then Beakwood is that like kind of more wise and serious type. And then Toya's two best friends, Kira and Konoha, I think did have some pretty decent characterization, which I did like enough, but if there is one character that I'm just not crazy about, believe it or not, it's actually the main character, Toya. Now, he's not a terrible character, but he's also not great either. If anything, I think he's just a little bit bland and boring. Like, there's nothing about him that I found to be super memorable or funny or, like, you know, no, he doesn't say any, like, cool lines that are very memorable at all. But he also doesn't say, like, anything that's, like, cringy or annoying or, you know, he's just, like, an unlikable piece of shit. So, yeah, he's just one of those characters for me that he's just kind of middle of the road, doesn't really do a lot. I mean, yeah, like, obviously he's the main purpose on why, like, these other characters could be able to, like, transform and get super powerful and whatnot. But, I mean, like, he doesn't really do much for me to make me like care about him that much. 
Even the villain characters, I think, have better characterization than the main character. For that, they actually do get to some pretty interesting stuff later. So that is, like, my one complaint with this series, is that the main character is just not really all that exciting. But if there's one other thing I do have to mention about this one, is that I find that the structure of it can get very repetitive. Because it really does feel like a Monster of the Week type of show, which I know is one of those things that tends to get a lot of shit from people now, but as for me, I don't have a problem with them as long as it can make like every like episode to be like somewhat like interesting or creative to make it a little bit more exciting. For an example, if you really think about it, Fist of the North Star has a lot of Monster of the Week type elements to it where, you know, Kentro goes around, finds like an evil bastard, and then has to kill his ass. But I always found they did a pretty good job of creating new scenarios to make it more interesting. Where in this show, however, I think they kind of did recycle a little bit of it too much to the point where it did get a little bit fatiguing. Probably the only episode that was like very Monster of the Week-ish that I was thought was kind of memorable and interesting was the one where a monster ends up attacking a theme park. But outside of that, a lot of the other stuff is pretty standard and, you know, some people would probably say is super generic as hell. So personally, I thought like the first three episodes were decent introductions to like to see like what the main characters can do. But then after that, into like the middle point, I feel like that's kind of where the series starts to feel a little bit of a slog to get through. And that's why I would say this show is more decent than anything because yeah, there are some good elements to it and I do like the idea of it. I like the animation, the music is great, but there's just some, like, like I said, some pacing issues that I think that do make it a little bit more of a slow burn to get through. And it's only 26 episodes, which is not long at all, but it actually felt like a lot longer when trying to get through this one. So, would I recommend this one? Well, I think a lot of, like, people that are used to, like, more modern animes probably wouldn't care for it much. But, you know, if you're like me and you like looking through, like, the obscure stuff... I don't think it's bad. I think it's at least like worth watching like maybe like a few episodes of just to kind of see what it's all about. It's not super great and it's not something I would get you guys to be like, okay, like you need to watch this shit right here, right now. But if you like taking a look at uh, Sunrise uh, older catalog of stuff, I actually don't think it's bad. I think it does have its good points. I really just think it just needed a bit more of an interesting main character. It also does need to be, have a bit more interesting episodes or creativity put into it. Because I do think the idea of it is pretty creative, but I just wish they would have went a little bit more better with the Monster of the Week elements. So that's all I gotta say about Wild Knight Golkiva. It's decent at best.